that's our viola part for the rondo by Moray. Um, so the beginning of this, I was going to go through and kind of talk about all the little things. So what you can use um, this video for is just to kind of guide you in your practice. Obviously, it's going to go by pretty quick. Um, a lot of this stuff you need to go through and practice individually. So I would just kind of hit spacebar or stop the video uh, and practice the little things that I talk about and try and work it up. And then eventually, after several weeks, several months, when we get closer to the audition time and then eventually the concert itself, you want to have a good sense of the style. So. Our style for this piece, um, generally, our bow strokes are going to be divided into two different categories. So our quarter notes are all going to have one particular bow style, and that style is going to be martelet. Martelet means to hammer like. So it should have a clear distinction at the beginning and as well as the end of each bow stroke. So anytime you have a quarter note, we want to make sure it's very martelet. Right, and have that clarity. Um, and then when you have your eighth notes or half notes, we want to make it more detache, where it's detached with the bow, but still legato. So it has to have more of a connected quality to it. So eighth notes, very relaxed with the bow hand, making sure that we have separate bows, but it's not. Right, so it has to be more um, fluid and more connected. So that's going to be the overall idea with this piece as far as the bow strokes are concerned. Um, there's a, a couple other things that we have to do as far as saving the bow as well as um, little nuances like hooks or detache lance is technically what this is called. So when you have, uh, in the first measure, those two eighth notes are up, up, those hooks, it's called detache lance. So you want to make sure you hear the distinction, kind of like the martelet stroke, more uh, articulate. Um, there's another one where it is more smooth and connected. That's more of a lore. Um, both I consider as hooks because you're hooking the bow in the same direction. But this one, if you see the dots, usually it indicates shorter. So we want to make sure we have good distinction. So detache lance is the technical term. Um, fourth fingers, open strings. Uh, you have to do what's best for you. But at the same time, since you're an honor student and you're trying out for this honor orchestra, in order to do well and then to be placed in a higher seat, you have to do all the little nuances. So using your fourth fingers when it's appropriate. Um, the golden rule is try and use the fourth fingers as much as possible. When it's easiest or when it's convenient, definitely use it. If uh, there's an open string that just kind of helps you get around, go for it. Otherwise, you kind of want to stay back. You want to use the, the um, fourth fingers as much as you can. Um, open strings tend to have a brighter timbre, whereas a fourth finger has a warmer, warmer sound. And then you can also vibrate those fourth fingers too. So uh, beginning, I like to use the fourth finger definitely because you gotta put the vibrato in. Um, and it keeps it all on the G string, which we keep that same color of string. Measures three and four when you're playing those arpeggios, G, D, B, D. Really, it's the, the only one in the orchestra that's doing this. I think the cellos are doing this as well. So it's a fun part. It's definitely not the melody. Um, when you're playing the viola or even the second violin part, oftentimes we don't have the melodic material, but you are the substance of the orchestra. And a good viola section or a good second violin section really makes that orchestra come to life. Um, first violins, yes, they get all the melodies, um, but at the same time, you really should just focus on um, the overall ensemble. So. 
Don't overplay your viola part. Don't think that every single note has to be heard or has to be the loudest note in the orchestra. You should always be listening for the melody. Um, so play underneath them, but if you know you have a moving part or an important part like these arpeggios, you can have a little bit more fun with it, make it present, make it more known. Uh, when you have repeated figures, like measure five, all G's, same thing, right? I think the most important part there would be the hooks. So you make sure those are clean and articulate, they come out, they stick out, but the rest of it isn't important because the first violins are doing all the moving stuff, second violins, I don't know exactly what's going on, but other people are moving, so you have to be aware of that. Um, so measure five going on, just make sure you're thinking harmony versus melody, moving parts, um, bring out the moving parts. Measure six, this is the first time we get to the dotted quarter notes. So dotted quarter notes are a bit tricky. I'm sure your teachers have talked to you about having um, a dot added to a note after a note, um, which makes it extend out half its value. So if you had a quarter note with a dot, you add half of the beat, which in this case, four, four time, quarter notes get one beat, so half of one is a half. So one plus a half is one and a half. So you have to subdivide and get that eighth note to move right on the and of two. So feel one, two. Now, a lot of violas, a lot of students will feel that they have to give a big push on that, that core, or sorry, that eighth note that follows the dotted quarter note. So we feel one, two, because it's such a short note. But really, the most important note is going to be the downbeat of most measures. So feel the downbeat, one, two, and three. Less on the F bow. So anytime you come across those dotted quarter notes, save on the dotted quarter note and then be lighter on that eighth note. If you spend too much on the dotted quarter note and then you have to get back to the frog for the eighth note, it's going to be, it's just going to come out odd. So save your bow. One, two. Right. Um, and then going on, so one, two. Moving parts. This is your time to shine, viola, so play it out. Alright, so, and then you come to the first ending. Uh, be aware that if you have three beats on a down bow, so the first ending, uh, the first measure there, you have an A on the G string, your first finger, and you're slurring to your fourth finger. That's three beats on a down bow, and then the fourth beat is up bow. It's the same kind of thing we did with the dotted quarter note eighth note. You want to say one, two, three, and don't be stuck at the tip, because then we're going to have a big whomping up bow. And remember what I said, the down beats are usually the most important part, so don't overplay the up bow. Right, I don't want it to stick out. Mm -mm. All right. And then you repeat back and you play the entire thing. Second ending this time. Be sure the second ending, um, when you do the writ, that is says to go on the last time. Don't do the writ the first time when you get to the second ending. That save that for the DS when you go back to the beginning of the entire or to measure three. Uh, that's when we do the DS. Sorry, the the repeat. The, it's getting late. The ritardando. And likewise, when you get to the second bar of the second ending, uh, the fermata, we're actually not going to hold that fermata until the very end of the piece. So just watch for a release at the end. But in this case, we're just going to count three and move right on. So we have the second ending, which is one and two. Three. 
and then we're off, right? One, two, three, off, and I'm right in on the next measure. Now, if you look at the Fermata bar, which we're not doing the Fermata the first time, only on the DS, um, there's only three beats in that bar. In our time signature, it says four, four times. So you should be counting four beats in that bar. Notice on the next line down, that first measure, there's only one beat. Because those are technically connected, the arranger wrote it this way so that you know the fine is the end. He didn't want you to get confused. But be aware that there is a pickup into the next section, and we rest on that section. Violas don't play. So the first violins have the two eighth note pickups and then we come in with our D, which hopefully we're using our fourth finger so we can vibrate. So when you're holding, make sure you count one, two, three, rest on four, come in. Make sure you're listening to the first violins as you're resting and then come in on the downbeat of bar 13. So um, for Mata bar, This whole section in here, we've gotten to the B section of our rondo. And um, when you're doing this, the first violins have the tune. So this is really just to kind of support them. But as you play each one of these Ds, we have to make it beautiful. So don't do open Ds, vibrate the fourth finger, and then feel those rests internally. We have to be counting. A secret that a lot of musicians will use, like professionals or even some good high school students, and since you're going into honor orchestra, we want to really push ourselves for a higher standard. So uh, we, we tend to breathe. So we'll feel those beats, and then usually on the very last one, uh, especially when you have three rests in a row, for instance, measure 14, you have a quarter rest followed by a half rest. So those three counts, we're going to breathe on that last beat so that we know when to come in. And it also helps everybody around you. The conductor is going to be breathing, which is me. So you want to make sure that we're all doing it together. So practice your breathing. It is a very useful way of staying together. Um, and then also just counting as well. So one more time from the fermata. <laughs> There's a lot of retakes in this section. So be very careful that you're always aware of when you start each note and always start from the string. Even though I'm retaking my bow, I place the bow right before I'm about to begin. Never come in and do a crash landing and pull because you'll get that bounce. We don't want to bounce. So measure 15, start from the string, have it on the string, retake. Breathe. As you're breathing, that's when you set. It is quite a bit of coordination, um, but if you work at it, you will truly get much better, and the whole group will be a lot tighter and a lot more together. Then at measure 20, we come to uh, sorry, the end of 20, pick up to 21, we come to the th main theme again. So keep the same style, martelets, um, and then legatos on all those eighth notes, and you have that same first theme. <laughs> us to our next section. So in a rondo we have three sections. This is the C part or the C section. When you have this third theme, this is the one that Moray tends to play around with dynamics. So we want to be overly exaggerated. 
So if it's forte, we're going to be using a lot of bow, using our whole bows. If it's piano, we're going to exaggerate and use very little bow. And it's really effective because it's uh, the downbeat's still in the same dynamic as before. So it's a forte downbeat. And then you're going to have a very soft um, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, and first beat of the next bar. So stay at the tip. And then when it's forte again, use that whole bow. And when you multiply that by 60, you'll see it becomes very effective and it makes um, the music really come to life. So exaggerate, use very little bows on those pianos, and then full bows on the fortes. So uh, we also have another technical issue. Um, we have F naturals, which is something new. We've been doing C naturals on the A string, which is the low twos, but on the D string, we have to now start doing low twos just because of the accidentals. So be careful, it's now low twos here. And then on top of that, we have to get the high three. So measure 30, I'm gonna skip. Measure 30 is playing your C natural on the G string. And then move to F natural on the D string and then E, and then G sharp. So we're gonna have to get that high three. We haven't really done too much with the high threes. But, so what I like to do is we will have our first finger and our thumb as the anchor. So it doesn't want to move. So if we ever have to do a low one, we can keep our thumb still so we know where to bring that first finger back to. Um, a lot of you probably have tapes, and it's a good thing to have tapes because you can always check your fingers. But as you're reading music, you're not going to be able to follow along. So make sure you're looking at your tapes if you've got them, just to double check that the first finger is set with the thumb. But we think about that low two touching the first finger. And then when we have the G sharp, we have to extend that third finger. So I always set the high two so that I can feel that third finger stretch as well. If you're keeping that second finger back and trying to stretch that G sharp, it's going to be quite a challenge because it's called an augmented second. It's very hard to do. I've been doing this a long time. I can barely reach it. But it's easiest if you reset the second finger for the F sharp and get that G sharp high. Now, try and block your fingers. It's kind of a bad habit if you play E and then lift your first finger and play F and then come back to E, and then stretching the G sharp. I mean, you can do it, but you have no reference points. So always try and keep your fingers down as best you can. So with this section, C starting measure 30, F natural low two, E G sharp stretch. I would practice just playing that F natural to G sharp making sure that you're thinking about the high two, thinking about the high three, coming back to the low two. All while keeping the first finger down. Right, so that's one thing to practice, uh, just making sure you know exactly how that works out. Um, but this whole section starts with a pickup to 29. So using a full bow in this forte section. about those dynamics and overall contrast, right? So when we get to measure 35, those all those A's, they're not important. And you have other people playing stuff moving along, so play loud but not too loud. And then 
add the vibrato, give it that beauty, that warmth. And then when you get to the piano, soft, so get to the tip, stay at the tip, even for the half notes, because before we were talking about using our full bows and everything else on half notes, but here we want to make sure that it's at the tip, it's soft, stay there, and then when you get to the forte, use your whole bow, right? Um, after that, we do have a B flat, so we did talk about low ones earlier. Make sure you get that low one nice and low, so starting from 40, 41, 42, um, I am using my fourth finger on the D string for A, and then open A, low. So make sure you keep the thumb where your first finger normally goes, but then stretch that first finger back for the B flat. Use your ear mostly, listen, make sure it's in tune, but get used to that movement back and forth. So. Be careful. Um, I wrote in this crescendo starting on measure 44, the second beat, going on to measure 45. Do try and emphasize that crescendo. And then when you take the DS, don't forget, DSs, you don't do repeats. So go back to the sign, play through, don't play the first ending, skip to the second ending. And since it's the last time you're playing it, what do we do? <laughs> we do the ritardando and we hold the fermata until the conductor cuts you off, right? So this is the pickup into the sign. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, um, be sure to check with your teacher first. And then also, by all means, uh, we have the Google Classroom set up just for you uh, and all the other students that are doing honor orchestra. Get on there, use that as a reference. Uh, I'll be checking that website periodically. Uh, leave me a video if you want me to watch you perform, if you want me to listen to you play. Um, I'll give you some feedback. Uh, it may not be the, the quickest response, but I will get to you eventually. Um, but uh, you still have a few more months to get ready for this. I know the music's new to you probably uh, at the beginning here, but start working at it slowly and then just work your way up and then we'll have our auditions and then our first rehearsal. So uh, keep practicing.